Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing, as well as analysing, tech news, which, as usual, has popped up the past 24 or so hours. Hopefully, you're having an amazing day. We've got an awful lot of stuff to get through in today's video, primarily focused on GPUs, both AMD and NVIDIA. We'll start things out with AMD, because... Well, there's been a lot of movements in AMD graphics news recently. As you are likely aware, RDNA 2 will launch later this year, and will be competing against RTX 30 from NVIDIA. And there are several very interesting rumours that have been swirling around. As you are likely aware, RDNA 2 will feature stuff like hardware-based ray tracing, and... Uh, it allegedly will be very impressive in terms of performance. Originally, I uh, leaked that AMD were internally referring to these uh, line of GPUs as the NVIDIA killer. And this is, as we're learning, not just in terms of raw performance, but in other metrics too, such as performance per watt and efficiency. One of my other early leaks with RDNA 2 uh, was that some of the engineering teams which were keyly responsible for the efficiency and uh, low power consumption of Zen were basically working on RDNA 2. So Lisa Su herself had stated that she wanted to pull engineers who were optimizing the Zen microprocessor architecture from, uh, well, you know, Zen, and pull them onto the GPUs, but my source said that RDNA 2 was the first architecture in AMD's graphics portfolio which would actually sport these enhancements, and we are starting to see that play out rather well. And naturally, this is even more important given RDNA 2 will be pivotal for the next generation consoles. After all, you can't have a highly energy inefficient architecture which is, well, basically constrained by quite a tight uh, thermal and power envelope, as you could find in a console. Oh, and by the way, this is also an article. I'll link it, of course, in the video description. I know some people do prefer the written format, and so for those people, if I'm covering a topic more in depth, I'll try to do an article for it. I'll also be an, uh, doing an article for an upcoming Nintendo uh, leak that uh, I think a lot of you will find very interesting. So if you are curious about, uh, let's say, a successor of sorts to the Switch, you may be interested in that video. That's probably going to be out tomorrow, and uh, the next day or two will also be a project I'm working on with uh, AMD and uh, MSI. Basically what I'm saying is subscribe to the channel. Anyway, getting back to the point rather than veering off, when we are talking about RDNA 2, there have been a lot of rumours, especially concerning the memory configuration. And it's quite interesting because there are reports that we'll see both a 12 and 16 gigabyte variant, which led to a lot of theories and even some rumours that we would see up to a 512-bit memory bus. AMD have done that in the past, but it's quite complicated, it's quite expensive as well to produce a GPU which has such a wide memory bus. Interestingly though, I've actually been contacted by a couple of people. One is Jim over at Adore TV, and the second is also Rogame. And apparently from their investigations and from what they're hearing, this is not the case, although there is a 16 gigabytes apparently of memory, at least for the higher end SKUs, it does not go up to a 512-bit bus. Well, we can speculate all day long, basically, on the memory configuration of this higher end part, but I did want to just throw that in there, that the 512-bit bus seems to be a nope. It's not happening. And also I wanted to touch on the frequencies of these next-generation GPUs. Now, it's imperative to realise that the final frequencies for these cards has not been, well, finalised. And this is because the cards themselves are not entering mass production yet. They are still doing internal testing and validation, and there's a good chance, at least from the rumours anyway, that the higher-end cards will launch first, and then lower-end cards will launch later. And one of my sources actually saw a recent video I put out covering the efficiency of RDNA 2, and allegedly it was only going to be 250-ish watts. At least that was the target earlier that AMD were aiming for for RDNA 2's higher-end SKUs. This may change depending on how competitive AMD 
uh, find NVIDIA. After all, if Ampere is really, really, really good, they may be forced to, to forego some of that efficiency, crank the clock speeds up, and just basically swallow the fact that it could end up being 300 watts, but apparently 250 was the target. And another one of my sources reached out to me and told me that RDNA 2 does have a couple of weaknesses, um, which I'm assuming will be fixed in RDNA 3. We'll get to 3 and 4 in just a moment. But apparently um, heat and power consumption are not those weaknesses. Apparently it is very efficient, and I am quite trusting of this source. And they also told me that when it comes to clock frequencies, there are limitations, but they're not necessarily heat imposed. And what they basically said is that the dependencies, and I don't want to directly quote them here, but basically they told me that the dependencies are basically inter-CU uh, bus interconnects. Um, that's essentially what they told me. Basically, the logic on the chip starts to break down. And what I find rather interesting about that is it reminded me of what Cerny said for the PlayStation 5. Um, if you remember the Road to PS5 event, they said that they capped the PS5's uh, GPU at 2230 megahertz, and this was not because of heat or power consumption. They said that it was on-chip logic was starting to break down. So perhaps that's what Cerny meant, but this also means it extends to RDNA 2 as a whole. So that really means that the desktop variants, as well as other variants, probably can operate at a cap of around 2200 megahertz. I'll stress, this does not mean that the chips will operate at 2200 megahertz. It could be 1900 megahertz or whatever, but most likely that is the maximum clock speed that you can get without serious errors starting to creep into the equation. Obviously, there's probably a little bit of uh, wiggle room because you don't want to be right up against the limits of what the silicon can achieve for obvious reasons, deviations in manufacturing, blah, 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 blah. Oh, and now getting on to some other info. So, Kamachi has recently, <laughs> let's just say he's used... Um, a lot of resources and put a crap ton of info out there. And one of those things is that um, Narve24 is indeed real. I leaked the existence originally of Narve21 and 23. Uh, after that, I believe it was Rogame. I could be wrong on that. He leaked 22, which I believe is purely going to be for Apple products. But Kamachi has also said that 24 exists, but it does not have... Uh, solid specs yet and it's apparently not been taped out and obviously because we don't have solid specs or any real understanding of what the GPU architecture is or what performance tier it is, all we can say is it exists. But now let's mosey our way to RDNA 3. There has been a couple of fascinating updates for RDNA 3 and one of those recently came that uh, a leaker from a Chinese message board had said that RDNA 3 was incredibly well, it was a large leap. It was a fundamental shift in GPU architecture. And furthermore, they also stated that it was on an enhanced node. And you could think Zen 2. Now, if you put all of those clues together, the most logical thing that you can come up with is that it's some type of chiplet design. After all, Zen 2 was famous for being a chiplet design. Secondly, Andrew Wang from RTG, Radeon Technology Group, had stated that they were considering chiplet designs for GPUs for gaming, but they weren't ready to do that yet. And this was before, I believe it was, the launch of RDNA 1. And next, and perhaps the most damning of all, is that their competitors have basically really pushed the fact that you need to do this. Monolithic dyes are not enough. Tiles are being used, basically chiplets for Intel's XE architecture, and for NVIDIA, of course, with Hopper, well, yeah, they're also rumoured to do the same. According to Kamachi, we have GCD and MCD terminology slash references in relation to RDNA 3, and these apparently will most likely mean graphics complex die and memory complex die, respectively. Obviously, if it is a chiplet design, this means that you will have a number of uh, GPU cores, essentially, which come together, or chiplets which come together, to form a larger whole. 
So, for example, and this is purely an example, I don't know how many CUs would be in a single chiplet, but for example, you could have, let's say, 16 CU per chiplet. So if you have a single chiplet, it's 16 compute units. Two chiplets, 32. I don't think you need me to keep going. I think you could do the math. And that would obviously um, improve not just the yields of the GPU, much like we've seen with Zen, uh, with the CPUs, but furthermore, it would also be instrumental in allowing more powerful GPUs at lower, at lower uh, co power consumption, excuse me, compared to a single monolithic die. Um, and NVIDIA have really been pushing that uh, list, excuse me, with uh, research. Lastly, Narve 41 has been discovered. Um, so with the code names, this most likely means it's the first GPU that AMD are designing internally because the one, let's say Narve 10, uh, Narve 21, it basically the lower end number essentially means the first GPU that's being worked on and most likely this would also be for a flagship product. So in other words, the higher end gaming tier for Radeon. There is no information about Narve 41, unfortunately, absolutely zero at the moment, which is not surprising. We barely know anything about RDNA 3 and even RDNA 2, there's a lot of stuff that's questionable. So with 41, what we can say is that, honestly, I kind of expected it. I wish I could kind of make this really exciting and hype it up and say, Narve 41, oh my god, dudes, but it's kind of obvious to me. Like, 31 has already been tested in the labs. They're already, like, bringing it up. 21, or Narve uh, RDNA 2, basically launches later this year. 31 and well, Narve 3 basically is being internally tested, as I just mentioned, and it doesn't make sense for them to leave a large gap in the uh, start of the design for RDNA 4, especially when they've said multiple times that RDNA is an architecture which is going to continue to evolve for a number of years. I don't remember how many years they've said, but it was something like five or six years plus. Uh, something like that. I could be wrong. I don't remember the exact number, but they've said it's going to be with us for numerous years. So it doesn't make sense for them to not be working on RDNA 4. Um, and this is kind of how AMD work internally. They have multiple teams which are working on multiple products, basically leapfrogging design teams is how they've referred to them. So you have Team 1, which is working on the first architecture. Team 2, which is basically taking what Team 1 learned and then applying it to the new architecture. And this continues down the line. So all, you, all you're doing is basically improving the design. You're basically consistently learning and improving. And this also means that if a feature, just for example, is not ready for, let's say, RDNA 1, it can be shifted to RDNA 2. Because let's say they couldn't get it working correctly, let's say it was causing errors or whatever, and they just didn't feel that it was going to be ready in time for shipping of that product, they can just pull it back one. And honestly, this just makes sense. Like, I think RDNA 4, <laughs> they're probably, honestly, this is not a leak, I'm just saying this being blunt, they're probably already in the planning stages for RDNA 5. Um, they probably don't have, <laughs> they don't have working silicon, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they're kind of early testing it. And back in like 2016 or 2017, I think it was 2017, one of my sources told me that they were already kind of bringing up Zen 3 for Milan. Now, I want to stress, these were not engineering samples running at high clock speeds. These were basically pre-silicon as they're literally bringing up the processor. But this is just an example of how long these chips do take to build up. This is not like one year, two years, three years. These roadmaps exist several years in advance. It takes them that long for the chip to release. So yeah, I'm not surprised Narve 41 is a thing. Since I've been prattling on about AMD's GPU for the last several minutes, or probably more like 15 minutes, I also would like to discuss uh, NVIDIA because there's a couple of updates for RTX 30, aka Ampere. This is courtesy of both WCCF Tech as well as Gamers Nexus. Gamers Nexus have stated that they believe announcements for uh, Ampere is going to be at some point in September. They're saying it could be the 7th or at least the early part of September. As for WCCF Tech, they claim to have some insight into some of the specifications for these GPUs. Allegedly, PG13210 
is going to be outfitted with 24 gigabytes of memories. It will be replacing the RTX 2080 Ti and apparently is scheduled to launch in the second half of September. We also have PG13220 and 13230. These will be essentially replacements for the 2080 board and as these cards will still have 20 and 10 gigabytes of RAM, which is an awful lot of RAM, to be honest with you. Uh, and then finally, we will have PG142, and this will replace the 2070 Super with 16 gigabytes and 8 gigabytes. There are also reports that uh, PG190 exists, and this is for the 2060, and it will have a measly, paltry 8 gigabytes of VRAM. The launch for this um, for the latter cards are going to be later, but there's not a specific date. Now, you will notice that the amount of VRAM listed here is actually higher than earlier reports. Copa-T7 Kimi, for example, and uh, others have stated that NVIDIA did not want to put over 20 gigabytes of memory on the GPU. So there's a couple of theories. The first is that one of these two sources is wrong, either WCC AvTech or copa -T. The second is that NVIDIA have chosen to do something differently. If I had to guess, this is because AMD are planning to plonk 16 gigabytes of memory on their GPU. Um, I'll be curious how this affects the price, honestly. <laughs> I'm really hoping that we're not going to be wincing as we purchase these cards, either from NVIDIA or AMD. I know I keep saying this, but the one thing I think will help keep both companies honest, well, first of all, there's competition from one another, but also the consoles too. We'll see. We will see. I'm not going to count my chickens, but I'm really hoping that the cards are not are not absurdly expensive this time around. I'm really hoping that NVIDIA uh, don't like make the cards even more expensive than what we saw with the flagship models previously. And finally, a small update for the medium on the Xbox. The developers have confirmed that it does indeed feature hardware-based ray tracing, so they have not disabled hardware-based ray tracing for the game on the Xbox Series X, which is obviously a really, really good thing. As I mentioned in my previous video covering this, it was still listed on the developer website, but for some reason or another, the uh, Xbox Store had removed uh, mention of it, and obviously it had just been a mistake, and hardware-based ray tracing is actually on the medium, so that's definitely good. I know I keep saying this, but when software and hardware are not out yet, yeah, things can change. Um, so it's cool, though. I'm, I'm happy that the medium does have hardware-based ray tracing, definitely. I'm going to be very curious to see how this game runs on the Xbox Series X and on the PC, and also how hardware-based ray tracing evolves for Turing, Ampere, and RDNA 2, and to see how efficient it is. I wonder how much optimization RDNA 2 cards get with hardware-based ray tracing, simply because they are essentially part of next-gen consoles. I wonder... Um, I'm going to be curious how the next gen shapes up. But with that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, the normal stuff. Like, share, comment and subscribe. I'm going to run off now because it is ridiculously hot in the UK and I am sweating like crazy. So with all of that said, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.